All right, so we have Marjane Holden Cartwright. I'm play around with that. Okay. <laughs> Here with us today. Oh my gosh, this woman is amazing. She's an absolute inspiration. She's a speaker, trainer, actress. You also did stunt work, didn't you? I did. Yep, I did. So many, so many different things that we are capable yes. of doing. Um, Marjane, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Well, let's see. You just said it all. So, um, but I'm also a mom. I'm a chameleon. I, I really, you know, it's like, that's such a funny question. It's like, who are you? It's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm in a menopause. I have no idea who I am. Um, you know, and so it's like the things that I have done in my life, it's just like, I've just been me, you know, which means that I've followed the things that I like to do and really trying not to compartmentalize myself into anything. It's like, yeah, I've been a trainer, a transformational trainer on stage and people go, oh, you're a motivational speaker. And I'm like, no, not a motivational speaker. People are motivated by what I say and what I train, yes. And um, that kind of translates also into my just everyday life with my, with my gifts and my sacred gifts of, of encouragement because what I really love doing is encouraging people to live their life by their own by their own devices you know by their own design by their own desires it's like um encourage you that's what i do i'm an encourager so basically i'm a big cheerleader for everyone <laughs> you know it doesn't necessarily work on myself but i'm a big encourager because it's like okay what do you want to do and people go, I don't know. And they go, so, hmm, let's think about this. Let's feel into this, you know? And yes, I've been a mom. I am a mom, not been a mom, but I am a mom. Um, I have traveled the world. I'm a world traveler. I'm an adventurer. I, you know, love talking about spirituality and growth and helping people move through limiting, <clears throat> limiting beliefs. And um, I was an athlete. Well, I guess not was, but am an athlete, once an athlete, always an athlete, even if you don't continue being sporty, uh, still an athlete. So still have you know, a little bit of that competitive drive and edge. <laughs> so, sometimes like, oh, I can do this, right? Um, and yeah, I, I did stunts and acting and moving now, uh, being in, in transition period in my life, just even in my, in my feminine energy, moving from that do, 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 do into a more creative aspect and moving in the entertainment industry into producing and uh, directing and writing and the more creative aspects, which I always have, have had somewhat in my, you know, in my realm, in my periphery in one way or another. But now fully jumping in and going into directing my first short film soon. And that's exciting. yeah, so that's a whole, and it's a whole new world, like a whole new world. And it's like, it lights my brain up in so many different aspects. And in fact, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day who's an, an, a longtime actor and I've known for 20, 20 years and, and he did an interview with me and he said, he said, oh my gosh, you're gonna love directing because it's gonna light up every single part of your brain. It's gonna light up your masculine brain and your feminine brain all at the same time. And you're gonna freak out, it's gonna be amazing. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Inside you're like freaking out just, <sighs> but it's, it's, well, it's a good freak out. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's a very so, good freak out. Is this something you chose? I mean, how, how did you get into doing what you're doing? Just following what felt good? Yes. And, you know, it's like, it's kind of like it chose me. And when I was young, I always <clears throat> was always into the create the more creative aspect of life and always into acting. And I was like, I have to be on stage and I want to be on stage and, and either performing in, school plays or whatever it was and then went on to college to study producing and directing television and then when I decided after four years of college I was like you know this isn't really getting me anywhere I left <laughs> I was like ah who needs to graduate from this I'm going to go graduate and be actually in the industry that I say I want to be in and just started working in the film industry 
in whatever capacity I could and landed a couple of jobs just right out of college um, as a production assistant on a couple of films. And through that was offered an audition for my first movie uh, as an actress. And after that, it was over. It was, I was done. I was like, I'm going to LA and moved to LA in 1987. And voila, here I am again in LA <laughs> after, after, yeah, 30, how many years now? Ooh, 32. Don't, don't think about it. This yeah, so I years. can't think about it. It's like, no, <laughs> this, this no numbers. Years. No, this just, much just a couple, this just, a, just a couple years. Yeah, you just, know. just one or two. Yeah. 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 What, I mean, what kind of challenges and, and, you know, ups and downs and what, what, not just challenges, but what in yourself kept you going? Because I know acting can be kind of, you know, so many people think that acting is a difficult thing and it is, but yeah. what keeps you going in between all that mess of not getting a job or getting a job or, yeah. You know, just, I don't know, just sheer determination for me anyways. It was like, it wasn't, it wasn't even something that, you know, it's like not an option, you know, it was just, this is who I am. This is who I be. And what do I need to do in order to continue this, this path? You know, it was just that internal passion, that desire, that drive, that that fierceness, you know, being in my, being in my twenties and like, okay, this is, this is just, this is who I am. This is what I do. And, um, <clears throat> it was something that I knew really early in a, in, in life that I would be in the entertainment industry and that's where I would shine my light. And there was a period of time in 2003, four, 2005 when I left the industry and I was like, I just can't do this anymore. What, what, but I need to have a direction. And that's when personal development really training on stage fell into, into my world <clears throat> and became the next phase for me and pursued that and did that. And it's been, now it's been 13 years since I led my, led my first course um, cause it's 2019 and 2006 was, was that first year, but it's like, okay, it's a 13 year cycle. And now what's next? Because that seems to be like, like now that I'm into like almost halfway through my fifties, ah, mind blowing. Um, then again, came to this point where it's like, okay, there's a transition happening. And it's all the way around the board. It's physical, it's mental, emotional, it's spiritual, it's everything like in one fell swoop. And so it's like, okay, what's next? Universe, God, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, where am I going? Because I've primarily dri been driven by that, that just sheer, you know, go get it masculine. Like you can do this girl, you know, get out there and do it. And that, that is a very challenging place to be for many, many years and not ever really balancing into that. Okay, just breathe, take a breath, be in the feminine receptivity, as opposed to pushing and driving and driving and driving. It's just like, wait, sit back and just allow inspiration to filter through and then take the action. So how, how difficult has that been for you? Because that's Oof. that, that push, 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 push. <laughs> and then, you know, you get this signal, signal from the universe. Yeah. However you want to put it, kick in the ass uh -huh. that says, that's not how you can continue to do things. How did you, how did you deal with, with that? And I know that you've had some, some medical issues and I know that that was a part uh -huh. of that transition. Is that, yeah. is that what was, the signal for you or was it, you know, gradual where you, you realizing that maybe I need to change things? Oh no, that, that wasn't the signal. That was just finally the thing that took me out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, because the signals came and I was like, no, I, I can do this based on what I teach. I can 
do this I'm ugh, and push through and then it it came to a point where it's like no you can't push through this anymore and how did I deal with it to answer your question not well <laughs> you know I didn't deal with it well because um, being conditioned in a certain go here masculine that arrow aspect there wasn't any you know training or anything in the other aspect of just like allow yourself to just be still and you know there have been moments of it don't get me wrong there have there have been moments of it where i've just taken my time and just relaxed but there was always something on the other side of that it's like oh i can take a week off here here and there um i can take a couple of days here and there but then right back into it as opposed to you know surgery time was like no nope, you're not doing anything and i and i prematurely went back to what i was doing and i you know i i um noticed it <laughs> in a very different way i'm not going to say i was um yeah, I was uh, definitely confronted with, you know, some pretty hardcore, like, yeah, this was way too early. And, you know, now you get to deal with the other consequences of that, which, you know, not always nice, not, a, uh, not always like the joyful aspect of change. <laughs> it's like, oh, didn't deal with that one very well. Ooh, yeah what can I do differently next time? You know, yes. and it's challenging because it's like, we've been driven as women, as alpha females. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call myself that because I know for sure I'm an alpha female, go out there, get it done. And being the alpha female, you know, we're not always taught to just, just be in that, in that, you know, feminine aspect because we've been raised and taught that that feminine is a dirty place. It's a, it's not a fun place. It's not the place where that's strong and it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's these, all of these things, these anti things that we have been um, conditioned to, as opposed to, wow, this is a natural state of being for all beings, yes. not just feminine and not, not just feminine, but the, the, the feminine meaning, if we take the word feminine out, it just means that connection, that more receptive space as opposed to, oh, it's feminine or it's masculine. It's like, no, this is the receptive place where all information can come in, where all inspiration and design, you know, and, and um, creativity and action, creativity, creativity yep. outside creativity comes in. And regardless of whether it's, um, you know, a creative idea to create a structured plan or a piece of art or um, an engineering model or, or whatever it is. It's a creative space of being connected to a greater wisdom, yep. right? And I, I had, had really not had a lot of practice in that. Even, I mean, funny as it sounds, being in the entertainment industry, you know, there was a one aspect that I was very, you know, versed in the creativity of acting because you do have to listen and you'd have to, you know, be in that space of allowing the information to come through in order to relay the characters, emotions and where they're at. And when I stopped doing that and pursued the personal growth industry from a different angle, what I was teaching wasn't geared really necessarily towards that receptivity. Yes, touches of it here and there, but more go after what you want. And it's like, but wait a minute, what I want and what's for my highest good and what's really my, meant for my soul to do may not be in alignment. Right. But we're, you know, we get, can get caught up in that matrix of, well, this is what worked for this person. This is what worked for that person. Do this, do that, you know, shiny penny and oh, this here and that there. It's like, but wait a minute, my soul is not resonating with that. It's like, that's not where my light wants to shine. It's like, so then 
there's that other trap of like, I went down that road and I went down that road and I went down that road and I did this and I did that because they said yep. that that's what I need to do. <laughs> you know? And it's like, why isn't it working for me? Well, it's like, because the soul's like, because eh, I don't want to be there. No. That's not where I want to be, regardless of how logical <laughs> it seems. And no matter how it's working for other people and, and constantly going, but it's, you know, that not judging, right? Be it's like, I'm my own worst judger. You know, we are all our, our own worst judger. We're and hardest I will, on I, ourselves, absolutely. Hardest on ourselves, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm learning to, um, ha, you know, I'm learning to not be as harsh on myself. <laughs> So that being said, with, with everything that you've done, what, what does it take for you to, what does it take for you to feel successful? I mean, how long did it take before you felt like you were successful in what you were doing? You know what? I don't think, I always felt accomplished, you know? And I always felt like, yeah, I have had a lot of success. Do I, you know, and I sort of like when you become an actor, you sort of feel like, oh, when I get that big A in this movie and I'm a big movie star, then I'll be successful. It's like just getting an acting job is a success because, I mean, at least for me, it was. It was, it was like I had always, you know, been like, yeah, you, you got this, you know, you got this. You're so conditioned as an actor to hear the word, no, you didn't get it. No, you didn't get it. No, you didn't get it. And then you get the yes. And you're like, oh, what? I got a yes? Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is a huge success. This is amazing. You know, and being so grateful. You know, it's like I've had some of these most amazing experiences of showing up on set and just being like, wow, I get to do this. This is amazing. I get to be completely a different character, which is a part of myself, which is not a part of myself, which you know, other people really identify with and wow, what can I bring to that, that may inspire people? So I love that you said that because it is, it's so many people think that, you know, this end goal is going to make me feel successful. If I have X amount of money, or if I get to this, you know, the penthouse office or, you know, the corner office or the penthouse suite or whatever. The hell right. You Mm -hmm. That's going to be my deciding factor of whether I'm successful or not. Yeah. And that's not really. Achievable. Not in my experience. No, no. <laughs> you know, it's does, like. Does your family support you? I mean, you, you, you know, most, most of the time when somebody says they want to be an actor, it's like, oh God, how are you going to, or an, any kind of an artist, you know, you think, oh my gosh, yeah. how are you going to make money doing that? I mean, has your family been supportive of, of always choices? That's amazing. Always. You know, they always, you know, my dad passed away. It, it was his 14th anniversary two days ago. Uh -huh. um, yeah, of him passing away. And he always supported me. My mom always supported me. And, you know, sometimes I think, oh, yeah, because I was the baby. I was the third one. And they were just like, oh, we're too tired to, to like, <laughs> try to do anything else with you. So... I was always the most more outspoken one, the more like, I'm going to do this and you're not going to stop me, you know, just had that kind of personality. Right. And so they were like, okay. You know, I was like, don't worry about it. You won't have to pay for my way. You know, you won't have to, you know, do this, that, and the other. And they're like, uh, okay, whatever you say, you know? So I took that on very early in, in, in life that, you know, I'll pay, I'll put myself through college and, you know, ask for very little support and, you know, which on the flip side was like, Oh, how do I ask for support now? <laughs> you know? And Oh, good. I get to practice that. Awesome. Woohoo. You know, yeah, and like, not freak oh out my about gosh. it and not freak out about it and be like, Oh, it's okay to ask for support. Nobody gets there on their own. Nobody, not even, it's like when people say I did it on my own, it's like, nah, somebody had to say yes to you. Mm -hmm. You may have, yeah, you may have gone 90%, but someone had to say yes, somewhere along the point in, in the journey. Someone had to say, hey, yeah, yeah, we, we, we uh, support you. We're behind you. We'll either, we'll finance you or we'll, you know, we like your idea. We say yes. It's like, yeah, you may not have had a support system around you getting to that point, 
But once you got to that point, somebody did say yes, right? Yeah. So we're all here helping each other. I mean, and it may only have been one person. It's like there was one person in my corner. Okay. You know, it's sort of like the Rocky Balboas of the world. It's like, you know, nobody thought Rocky could do it. And boom, there you go. Granted, it's a movie. However, that happens every single day all over the planet where, you know, we're not conditioned to, to continually to just to support each other. It's like, here, you're on your path. Great. Here, you're on your path. Great. Here, you're on your path. Awesome. 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 Keep going. Do that. We're conditioned to judge ourselves and judge others and, you know, compete with each other and say, oh, what they're doing is way better than what I'm doing. What? Why? Yeah. And that's, you know, that you'd asked me earlier why I wanted to create this this series and this whole podcast and um, YouTube channel was because I see a lack of women supporting women. It's, yeah. it's growing and it is, yes. it is becoming a more of a, I don't want to call it a thing, but we do need to support our, each other and being okay with accepting that support. You know, yeah. it's a hard, I don't know about you, but for me, it, it was a hard, hard thing to, and it still is to some degree to ask for help and then accept that. Help. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. I, I, I getting appreciate. a lot better. Uh, yeah. Getting a lot better. <laughs> I think it's probably because I just wore myself down and now I'm just too tired to say no to help. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Fine. <laughs> like, I'll accept okay. it. Okay. Throw your hands I'll up and just All the right. support. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, Martin, do you have, you have written goals? You know what? I used to have written goals all the time. I want to do this, 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 and this. And I know that that is a way to achieve and accomplish and strike things off of the list. Now that I have gotten to this point in this, in this transition in my life, you know, it's like my goal is to wake up every day and feel good. You know, because it's like the hormone imbalance is interesting, Not have a to hot say flash. the least. Yeah. It's like, oh, suddenly there's this, this energy that comes over me and it's really warm. And it's like, whoa, five seconds ago, I was freezing and now I'm not. <laughs> you know? so, so right now, it's like I have allowed myself to not write down so many goals because this transition period for me has, has really, I've noticed that anytime I go, Oh, I have to achieve this, 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 and this, my body immediately goes into stop resistance to resistance. And so I'm like, okay, I'm just going to be with this for now. <laughs> you know? And how, how are you, how are you doing with that? I mean, it's hard. Okay, man, for me, it is really hard because I have taught, you know, write down your goals. What do you want to achieve? Set your intention. And so my intention is to follow that next, you know, to follow the inspiration as opposed to, oh, I'm going to move out of desperation. Now we move either in inspiration or desperation. And I'm like, I want to be moved by inspiration. And I keep talking to you know, um, you know, girlfriends and people who have gone through this particular phase of life and, and spiritual, you know, healers. And God, I'm just like not inspired by a whole lot right now. And they're like, that's okay. Just be with, you know, having some time to just be with yourself. And I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> you know? So, but, but now it's, it's really like, it's the practice of what am I really inspired to do? What am I really inspired to take action on? Because before I was just taking action just to be taking action and that gets exhausting. Yeah. And so from the more feminine space, there is no, there's no, um, and, and working towards not judging, like some days I go, God, and this is, this is like a real place. I'm like, uh, I just sat on the couch all day. 
and did nothing. And did nothing. And I don't know what if I'm I, okay with that. And I, it, and I don't know if I'm okay with that. But guess what? It just happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It just happened. And uh, is tomorrow going to be the same? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. And, you know, my girlfriend, one of my girlfriends was like, you know what? You just need to sit on your butt and just meditate. Listen to some, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza and rewire your brain. And, and I'm like, wow. And it's not an easy, it's not easy. It's just not easy. I mean, I would like to, to say, yes, life can be easy because it truly can be. And it takes a lot of um, diligence to uncross the wires of the the conditioning of you have to work hard for everything you get yeah and coming from work hard for it and then it will you know feel better mean more it's like can we challenge that and say why i just maybe it, it doesn't feel any better working as, you know, hard as I work for things, maybe it does feel good to just, wow, <sighs> I took inspired action. I didn't waste a lot of energy and it feels really good. <laughs> you know, It's like, and I've done, you know, I've had to do a lot of work on myself in this place because it's like, whoa, and one of my one of my, one of the, well, the, heal, the healer that I'm working with right now, she's out of Germany and she has an incredible technique that she's, that, that she has been developed and been given from the divine, uh, which is a very feminine, feminine place to be of, of unhooking all of these old beliefs and things like that. And, you know, we've become friends over, over this as well. She was one of my students and, I was just so super drawn to her. And I was like, wow, this is really big stuff. And she said, yeah, because what if life is just meant to be easy? Like if we just going with the flow of what? the way. And I said, like, yeah, wow. Huh. You know, I kind of teach this in one of my courses, but I haven't <laughs> taught is it as much as the other go get it, get it, get it, get it. Yep. You know, it's the, it's the feminine of, you know, watching, you know, the, the example I always use. And I have to remind myself, constantly it's like a river doesn't you know go oh i'm gonna resist going downstream i'm gonna resist going with the flow the only thing that happens when the river isn't flowing properly is that there's an obstacle in the way oh maybe a a, a you know a tree fell in the river or there's a huge rock but what does the water do it doesn't stop at that point it goes and it flows right around it yeah, we it's need like, to be more oh, like water. That, actually, more like that, water. Bruce Lee said that. More yeah. like water. <laughs> that actually brings me into what what do you do for, for growth, for personal development, for self-development? What do you 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 obviously you teach a lot of that. Now yeah. teaching that obviously helps to instill it in yourself, but what I mean, what are the things do you do you meditate? Do you yeah. journal? I, what do you do? I was not a big meditator. I have never, you know, I, I use um, motion as meditation, like walking mm -hmm. or just movement, dancing. Um, that has been, uh, you know, as a creative, that I find helps me a lot. Um, and then just recently, like really just recently, in the last few months, I've gotten into just like sitting meditation, like, and, and doing guided meditation. Mm -hmm because I've always found it like, you know, my mind will just wander here, there and everywhere. And like, oh my gosh, like some weird random thoughts. And I'm like, yeah, okay. There's one of those 70,000 weird random thoughts that I've had today. Um, but working more in that realm of, uh, um, you know, the guided meditations and, and really <clears throat> doing that and found some, some apps that, that I really like and and you know trying a variety of things to see you know because one day one thing really feels good and then the next day something else feels good 
and not really getting locked into <clears throat> the rigidity of saying it has to be this way. Because then I find myself in resistance. Okay. As opposed to if today I go, huh, I'm feeling drawn to do this meditation, or I'm feeling drawn to do yoga for the next 15 minutes. I'm really drawn to shaking my body out, you know, in a dance kind of way right now. And that's very, that's very feminine. That's very flow. It's like, what's the universe going to bring now? <laughs> and being okay with that. And being okay with okay. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yes. That's, and that's key. You've said that a couple of times, yeah. being okay with that. Because we do get into, you know, as a conditioned, you know, response, a conditioned society of saying, you know, it's not okay to, to deviate from this thing. It's like you've you set yourself a you goal to do X, Y, Z, you've got to do X, Y, Z in that <clears throat> order and being yeah. okay with, no, I need to go to X to A to Y to Z yeah. to B because that may be what you need at that moment. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, so then it sounds to me, actually, that kind of is funny that my next question, are you a planner or a go with a float type of person? It's like you've gone <laughs> from being a planner to a go with yeah. the flow kind of person. And I'm a both kind of person, actually. I'm a both because it's like, but I find, but I'm finding that if I do too much planning right now, mm -hmm. like of how my life needs to look, yeah, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't happen. Now, the other example is, hey, I'm directing my first short film coming up. So there is a certain amount of planning that needs to go with that. And so for me, that's in a creative aspect. And I go, okay, what do I need as the director? What needs to be in place for me? And going back to the producer and saying, hey, I would like this, 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 and this, and I need it to happen by this time because when we are when we're shooting, when we go to shoot, you know, I need these things in place. Yeah. And that's your job. <laughs> you know, if it's going to be my job, which, okay, that's cool too. However, because my, my, my automatic producer instinct kicks in, you know, and it's you like, I'm producing okay. as well. I have, I've produced a couple of things, small things, but there's just something that, I, it's it's strange because it's like my husband was on set one day and I went with him. I went with Eric and I could, it was somebody else's thing and I could, I walked on set and I knew exactly what needed to be done everywhere with everybody. And I was like, time for me to walk away because if I stay any longer, I'm taking over. And then, <laughs> you know, it's not going to be their film anymore. It'll just be my film. And I was like, that's not really why I'm here. Okay. I got to go <laughs> you know? before I decide to take over the, the whole thing. And <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it sounds like everything that you're doing is fun, but what do you do specifically for fun? Oh, geez. That is a good question. Um, like yesterday we went and, uh, we went to my goddaughter is, um, uh, she's a cowgirl. And she had a high school rodeo yesterday. So we went out and we watched her at the rodeo and it was just, it was just fun. It was just awesome to be out there and see these kids on these horses doing their thing. And one of the things that I really love doing for fun is I love to, um, I love to ride and I haven't done it in a long time. And it's like, yeah, I need to get my butt back on a horse and I need to ride. I love doing that. It's just, you know, I love um, going to movies and it's weird because it's like the movies is all part of like what I'm here to shine my light in. But that's the thing that I lose track of time with. It's like watching movies and watching television shows and I'm constantly like, like, and that's fun for me. It might not be fun for other people, but it's fun for me to watch a series and go, "Who? How did they do this?" Let let me pay attention to the writing, like like I the directing, you know, you stuff you're, like you're that. Watching. I was going to ask you when you're watching, do you, you know, analyze it and be like, "Oh, I, yes, you could have done this, or you could have done," and and that's, 
I can imagine that being fun because you're, you're familiar with that process. And so you yes. can take that process and watch something and, and watch it for fun, but then also watch it with that background of knowing yeah. this is how they did that. That's cool. Yes. That's yeah. Cool. And, and sometimes I, even I forget, like if it's done really well, I forgot how they do that. It's like, oh yeah, it's the magic of movies. Hello, Marie, <laughs> you know this. But it's like when it's a really great production and things like that, I go, oh. But there are certain movies that I'll just watch just for fun, you know, like comedies. I'll just watch those for fun. It's like, because it's not, because comedy is not an area of, for me that I, I am like, oh yeah, I want to direct comedy or I, I want to do, you know, do, you know, comedic stuff. That's not my focus. Right. It's like my focus is science fiction, action, you know, those kind of things, because that actually, I get to be super creative and in feminine, and it, it actually quelches my, like, like saturates my masculine part as well. So it's like this complete balance for me. It's like, oh, I can do science fiction, action, you know, and both sides get fed. Right. And both sides are happy, right? as opposed to oh if i just did one specific thing it's like then it's like you know the uh, out of balance so it's really interesting because i just watch i'll just watch comedy just to watch comedy just to laugh <laughs> you know not like oh yeah i want to go direct a comedy film or i want to go direct comedy television because that's not really that's not really interesting not to me that's not my yeah. thing my thing is like the thing that that i do have the desire oh yeah action some something with action it could be action drama it could be just action you know whatever science fiction fantasy action that so kind of movie, stuff really kind of like you're going to be directing is going to be like a science fiction action movie as well it is a it's a it's a action short action yeah short? is it and it's a it's a sci-fi action short <laughs> You know, it's so, a little so it's, light. It's light on the sci-fi, but it's it's light on the sci-fi. Yeah. But it's an action short and it's female driven. Awesome. I love so, that. So yeah. Yeah. So I love that you said female driven. Do you have other women that inspire you? You know what? I have so many women that inspire me. And not necessarily like famous women, but I have girlfriends that inspire me because it's like they've been through so much. Like my girlfriend who's She's a stunt woman and she's just like, she's got this most beautiful, amazing, kind heart. And she's like always there for people. And I'm like, she inspires me. My girlfriend who, you know, this morning movement and she's a, she's a dancer and she's gone out and she's gotten her dance, you know, her dance uh, um, groove on. And it's like, she inspires me. And she's like, oh, I'm studying this and I'm doing this. And I'm, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. And I know that she's come up against a lot of the same things that that I'm going through. And she's one of my go-tos, like, oh, I'm feeling this. And she's like, oh, God, I've already been there, done that. What about this? Try this, you know, do that. Um, you know, my mom's inspiring. She's pretty, you know, she's a pretty tough cookie, you know? And I always, you know, thought, I never, never looked at her in a, in a way that, like, oh my God, my mom's so super inspiring because it's like, I always identified more with, the, with, my, with my dad, with the masculine. And then like watching her and everything she's gone through, I'm like, oh, geez. Wow, woman, you are strong. <laughs> I, I, love that, I love that you're, you're talking about people who are what some would call everyday women. Because yeah. those, though, like you said, your, your mom, my mom has really inspired me. My grandmother, you know, these, these are women who nobody else knows, uh, you know, outside world doesn't know but you know some of the, the the people that can inspire us the most are the ones who are close to us that we just you know i don't want to say take for granted because we've seen the way that they've dealt with life but we don't realize to what extent they've had to deal with life yeah and so until we get to that point where we're like Maybe it's when we're in that situation, then we're like, oh, maybe so-and-so has a better idea of how to deal with this. And then we're like, oh yeah, that's somebody who's inspiring now. Yeah, yeah. Good and time. that, you know, that's, that's what astounds me is that we need to be able, and be supportive of each other. 
when we're going through those things. You know, I think it helps out. Like, yeah. you know, I, I call, I call you and you call me. It's like, Oh my God, I can't take it right now. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's having each other's back, yeah. you know, and being able to communicate and being able to communicate in a positive way. It is possible. Yes. We need to do yes. it. More. It is possible. <laughs> so Marjean, what kind of a legacy do you want to leave? Mm. You know, my big desire, my big dream is to, um, really leave, uh, especially my daughter, um, that, that balance of, you know, I can, I can be strong and I can be feminine. I can be creative. I can be, you know, direct and really be, um, follow my desires and my, you know, my dreams for her. Um, and also just, you know, as, as many people as I can inspire to shine their light, that's what I want to do. You know, that's really, that's the kind of legacy for me and, um, have people go, wow, she really inspired me. Like, like, you know, I get it. I'm not going to say I get it all the time, but I do get, you know, every once in a while when I need it, I think when I need it most, somebody says, do you remember what you said to me? And I go, nope, don't remember because it doesn't come from me. It comes through me. And they said, you told me this. And I went and I go, Oh, you know, my girlfriend just said that to me last week. She's, she's a singer and she's up for, um, Emmy consideration for her, for her album, which is phenomenal. And yeah. she goes, do you remember at life directions? You told me this. And I went, Nope, don't remember. And she was like, I, it, it always stuck with me and I will always remember you for that. I went, wow. Wow. Because it wasn't me. It was, it was a spirit move through me. This is, you know, what needs to be said. And that's, that's allowing that feminine, that download mm -hmm. creativity to come through you. And, and you, you've done the same thing with me. And, you know, even though I don't remember exactly what you said to me, and yep. you remember <laughs> calling me out in front of the entire nation and, you know, Roy, Roy brings it up occasionally because Um, you did it in such a, a kind, but tough way mm. that, you know, I needed, and then I noticed that with someone else, you, you switched that just a little and were a little bit, you know, a, a slightly different method for what they needed. And that, that ability to shift Mm. is what makes you so good at what you do in that aspect because you have that like you said earlier that chameleon like ability right to to, to be able to speak to whoever on in a way that they understand and they they can appreciate and take to heart like you said with your singer friend i'm sure it was a different way than you you you, you uh, yeah. brought me to realize the things that i need to realize that's one of your great gifts, and I, I really appreciate mm. that from you. Thank you. Of course. Mm. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> so, Marjean, favorite book or books? Oh, gosh. Favorite book. Um, I found this author in Australia that I absolutely adore, and I love her books. And she wrote a book called The Ancient Future. And it's a, she calls it esoteric fantasy. And for me, I was like, I read it and I was like, this is so real. It was about a woman who was transported back to 519 AD. And, and she, uh, you know, meets her, her past future concurrent husband and all these different timelines. And she creates a whole new system of fairness. And <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I love this time travel stuff back and forth. It's so real. Um, I love that book. And, um, there was a little book that I read so many, many years ago in my, the beginning of my personal growth uh, journey called the game of life and how to play it. And by Florence Scovel Shin. And to this day, it's still one of my favorite books. It's just like, it's a hundred pages and it's just like amazing. Love it. Nice. Absolutely Those books love it. Are the ones that are concise yeah. are amazing. Yes. Yeah. And right now I'm, I'm on the tail end of reading a book about dragons by Diana Cooper. And 
loving it <laughs> called your our ancestral or our, our celestial um you know uh guides and it's just awesome it's awesome it goes with the deck we have <laughs> yes oh i like that deck that's an amazing <laughs> deck too. yeah that thing is the, the bomb i love yeah. that deck it's one of my favorites yeah. so, um since this podcast and youtube and all that is going to be for girls young ladies women mm. out there what would you like them to know what what um knowledge would you like to impart oh my gosh just learn as much as you can and allow yourself to follow your your dreams to dreams do become reality and follow your um impulse or instinct into your heart of what you want to do and don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't because you can and always surround yourself with girlfriends <laughs> that got your back love that I yeah love that. thank you so yeah. one one last question what's one question that i didn't ask you that i should have asked you oh let's see um <laughs> what? what's my favorite food no. <laughs> oh, what is your favorite food <laughs> chocolate of course uh, of course <laughs> i made i made roy get out of bed last night to go get us ice cream <laughs> yeah <laughs> get the ice walk. cream wow <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Marjean, thank you so very much. God, you're uh, welcome. You have inspired me. It is me. my pleasure. You inspire so many other people. I, I greatly appreciate you taking the time out and sharing thank you. everything about yourself with us. Thank you so much. My joy. Very much. I love you and I support you and I encourage you to keep taking these steps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of the lives that will be transformed and changed. And, you know, one of my mentors always said, if you only transform and touch one person's life, you've done your job. And I have always stuck with that. And it's like, because it's one person here, one person there, boom, boom, boom. You just don't know the ripple that your, that your, you know, little stone in the pond is going to create. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So much. <laughs> Love you. Thank you.